Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, took a trip with a couple friends down to Mole Bowl, Cebu, to uh, Penagsma. I'm sure I killed that uh, pronunciation. Penagsma. Anyway, beautiful water, beautiful temperature. Uh, we had some pretty good weather, had uh, a few clouds, some storm clouds off in the distance, but in the end we didn't get very much rain at all. Got quite a bit of sun. And uh, I've got a number of videos uh, to put up. This is uh, we're gonna. This is a room at the uh, at the uh, beach resort we stayed at. One thousand five hundred during the weekdays. I think four days, and then the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I believe it's uh, goes from fifteen hundred a night to eighteen hundred pesos a night. But it's got all uh, pretty much everything we needed. Split type aircon. I think they have 11 rooms, not positive. Uh, many of the rooms, a few of the rooms have the uh, conventional window type aircon. Got a little refrigerator there, water uh, dispenser, uh, basic uh, CR, comfort room, toilet area, soap in the soap dispenser, even. And got a hot water heater there, and that worked worked just fine and something that's very common in the Philippines is a bucket with water and a something to rinse yourself off. Bungalows de Sabadra. Ten rooms I guess. Anyway we're going to take a walk down. This is kind of a, if any of you have been to Mole Bowl, it's a uh, very popular tourist area. Also very popular with uh, with Filipinos. This is the French coffee shop. We had uh, breakfast there a couple days. They were, they were open because of the uh, economic crisis that we're in. They, would only, they were open, I think, from 7 or 8 until, until noon because there just was no customers after that. And uh, the Hungry Monkey Bar, they were open. Most places were closed, but you've got You've got pretty much you've got the beach to yourself. There were a number of locals. There are a number of of expats, foreigners who live in Mobile. And uh, anyway, you can find you can find restaurants open till eight nine o'clock. Uh, any anywhere from the uh, a quick Seven uh, Eleven snack on up to a few of these places that give a little more substantial uh, meal and we were able to uh, find the food uh, that we wanted. Anyway, this would normally be teeming with chili bar. teeming with tourists. And here we go, got bar. the chili bar. It was open. And you're serving alcohol? Uh, they had uh, didn't have much open in the way of bars, but you could find uh, you, you could find a drink, you could find a resto bar. Uh, with and food, and uh, we ate uh, up, right. up those stairs there. Uh, we did go up there and, and have a meal at, uh, they called it Lantau for a while, now it's just Antau, I think, something like that. They, they changed the name a little bit. And uh, anyway, most of these places are closed down, but you uh, do have access to the, there are places where you uh, the public has access to the uh, beaches. And uh, anyway, we made a trip, uh, made a trip down to the public market. We made a trip over to White, uh, White Beach, White Sand Beach, and it was really interesting. I'd heard different things over the, over the years about that. I'd never been there. I think I've had three trips to Mobile. Got a store like this that is renting. Mostly they rent this stuff. Uh, masks, uh, snorkels, um, life preservers, floaters, and all that type of thing. And uh, in fact, I rented. I didn't. I did not bring mine down, unfortunately. God, the one I rented, uh, I rented it from another place. Didn't really work real well. I kept getting water in my mask and I've tried to adjust it a number of times but the best thing is to do if you if you're gonna if you're really serious about snorkeling or diving is to have some of that equipment and you know it works properly and 
And uh, anyway, did a little bit of snorkeling, but uh, like I said, we we visited a few resorts, and uh, I took video of a number of uh, rooms, got a little bit of information there. So during the coming week or two, uh, made it to the public market, and out to a, uh, did a little bit of uh, snorkeling at, at the White Beach. Uh, it is a nice uh, sand beach there. This area here, uh, not not really a sandy beach. There are areas where it's it's better than others, but you, you wouldn't consider. Definitely is not a white sand beach. Anyway, there's a little bit of construction going up, going on. I think those guys were, guys right here, I think they said they were building a house. So what if somebody plans to live there? If you want some quiet, some solitude, you've pretty much got the whole place to yourself. I will say, the first night we were there, uh, there was a, a uh, right next to where my friends stayed, next to me, uh, they have a large room, five beds or something like that for, for groups. And they had a group in there and they were noisy off and on uh, through the night having their little party, and uh, there was uh, had a little bit of racket in the morning, had some some kids selling sticky rice, come by about six in the morning, they're hollering, hollering out uh, that they have, uh, have the sticky rice for sale. But pretty much you could, could find, if you're not right next to a bar that's going to one of the few bars, uh, you could find a quiet place or you could find a noisy place. And uh, yeah, normally you would be, uh, you would be bumping into uh, tourists coming and going on this the sidewalk through this area, but almost absolutely nobody here. One thing we did, uh, we did go by and ha have a chat with, a, uh, the JRC, a Visa Consultancy, he's got an office down here, not very far from the uh, beach area itself. And uh, so they do, uh, they, they do some business down in this area. Now this kid, I went out, went out and did just a little snorkeling just out in front of our thing. And this, this kid was down there, he's not snorkeling. Well, he did snorkeling. And he's got a spear, he's got a little spear there and he's already, uh, gotten a few fish there he's got on his line and uh, he's, he's looking for the little fish that are hiding in little crevices I guess looks like poking around sticks his spear in there see if he can uh, snag a fish bring home some dinner for the family a lot of fishermen out here uh, some of them in scuba gear many of them out in boats uh, fishing day and night. I've seen one guy come in about six in the morning, so he'd been out uh, many hours uh, during the evening. So as you can see, this is not a sand beach. Uh, I would definitely recommend wearing like water socks or something, something that you can uh, sort of protect your feet. Uh, you don't want to step on, uh, on a lot of these sharp rocks. And anyway, this is looking back at their number of resorts along here. In fact, many, many resorts. Most of them are closed, but uh, this is the one that we stayed in. And uh, yeah, I think they've got 10 rooms there. And uh, anyway, we could walk uh, to restaurants. But love that clear blue water. We had great weather. It took us uh, three hours uh, to get here from Cebu City, and I, I will say that I was riding with a uh, somewhat aggressive driver. <laughs> That's all I will say. And we got back in two and a half hours. Now, if I was driving, it would have taken me three and a half hours, I'm sure, because I am uh, I'm a relatively defensive uh, driver, I guess. And anyway, uh, the fishermen, they, they park their, their little bancas, their little dugouts. 
And this is kind of the main road. You follow this uh, either way, and you've got resorts. Anyway, I've got uh, quite a number of, of videos to do in the coming days. So anyway, we actually even had a parking spot uh, in here. One, they had room for one car and a few motorbikes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.